Welcome to Some Guy's Garage. Today we're going to take a look at what's inside my service bag. I put this together because I'm often helping friends, family, and neighbors, and rather than going and stealing a bunch of stuff out of the big toolbox, it's really convenient to have something that I can just grab with a bunch of the standard hand tools that I need to go and do general jobs around the house. So we're talking fixing things like small appliances, electronics, furniture, maybe some electrical things or plumbing, but general household tasks that you would normally have to do with basic hand tools. Just before we get started, I wanted to thank all of our subscribers. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider it. We do a lot of things with tools, builds, machining, automotive, and other general garage stuff. So if that interests you, we'd love to see you around here more often. All right, first the bag. So this is a DeWalt Technician's bag. It cost around $65 actually on sale. They had a pretty good sale on it recently. So that's actually why I picked it up, saw a good price and decided to go for it. Um, it's a decent sized bag, has 20 something pockets, uh, lots of space for different things. And not too big though that it's bulky and awkward to carry. We'll start at the very front though, so I'll just work my way through the bag. In this front pouch here, it's a little tight because it is a fairly new bag. I've got earplugs, so just a couple of pairs of disposable earplugs. And if I can get in there, there's some bandages. So never know when you're gonna get a cut finger, doesn't hurt to have that. In the other front pouch here, there's a bunch of batteries. So I do have some double A's and triple A's. There's a bunch more than that. I'm not gonna try and dig them all out of there. So that's what I keep in this front pouch. Most of the stuff on the non-zippered pouches I've tried to keep as things that are kind of some of the disposable sort of things. So you don't have to worry about them as much if they did slip out if the bag tipped over or something like that. Moving up from there, uh, this pouch just has pencils and sharpies. So as everybody knows, you need to have pencils and sharpies to write on stuff. Uh, nothing else in there at this point. Next up, moving into a larger pouch. This is where we start to get some interesting things. So in this front pouch here, we have some electrical tape and extra X-Acto knife blades. There's also a Wera stubby ratcheting screwdriver uh, with a few bits inside of it. So just gives me a stubby option if I need something a little shorter than a regular screwdriver. There's a magnet, so a magnetic pickup tool, extendable one. Over here, there's a knife. So just an inexpensive one, fold out, blades go with it. But good to have a utility knife. Moving up from that, pair of wire cutters. Further up from that, there's a set of hooks and picks. Just a smaller set, but enough that if I needed to pull something out, uh, like a seal or something, I can get at those. Moving across the front, there is a flashlight. So this is a Streamlight ProTac 2AA, so it's a AA flashlight. But nice to have a flashlight and decent one, and that's why the extra batteries in the front as well. Some of the tools do take batteries, and last thing you want is one to be dead. And then just across the front here, there's a normal set of flathead, Phillips, and square drive or Robertson screwdrivers. These are all wear as well, but just general smaller length screwdrivers uh, of a variety of types. I do have some pockets here left, so there's a couple pockets that don't have anything in them yet. Eventually those might get filled up. This is pretty new still, so I imagine things are gonna move around as I go. So continuing up from there, we'll go around the side. On this side here, I have a small torpedo level. Again, something not too inexpensive. A lot of the tools in this are either seconds that I had from other sets of tools that I don't really use anymore, or were bought on the relatively cheap side, so not my best tools, let's say. Reason for that is they are going to get used and carried around away from the home and you just never know what's going to happen. But it was also a cheaper way to kind of fill up the bag with what it needed for the jobs I usually do without spending a lot of money. So torpedo level, there is a better stud finder. Um, so stud finder, as you all know, on the walls and stuff like that. Another reason to have spare batteries and a 25 foot self locking measuring tape. Moving on to the other side, there's a set of zip ties here, a few different lengths, never have too many zip ties, a non-contact voltage detector, so just the, something to check the outlets and things like that, and as well an actual dedicated outlet tester in here. So oftentimes I'm doing like small electrical things, putting in an outlet or something like that, and having those sort of things is very handy. Right on the back side, Get the handles out of the way here. Around the back side, I have a small magnetic tray to 
keep parts in. There's a pair of mechanics gloves. They're actually brand new ones, but a pair of mechanics gloves, always handy to have something to protect the hands. And speaking of which, also a different, a couple different kinds of nitrile gloves. So again, you never know what you're gonna get into, especially with plumbing or something dirty. Nice to have some stuff to keep your hands clean. And if you do get a bit dirty, I have some folded up paper towel just here in the front pouch, also along with a pair of safety glasses just wrapped in a paper towel to keep them from getting scratched in this back pocket here. So that's the bulk of what's on the outside of the bag. We're gonna go inside now, and this is where I'll take everything out just to make it easier to, to film and to show you. So just a quick look inside before I get started emptying it here, but, but you can see there's pouches around the outside with all sorts of different tools inside of it. But I'll take this all out and lay it out on the bench so you can see what's going on here. Okay, I have everything from the main part of the bag laid out on the bench here. And we'll start at the bottom. There's a small case here that I keep a bunch of screws and bolts and other miscellaneous parts. So some quarter inch bolts, different types of screws, drywall anchors, construction screws, self tappers, but just general hardware that you tend to need when you're doing an odd job. Not enough to really build anything, but quick fixes, hopefully that covers it. Set of general pliers here as well. Um, these are gear wrench ones, kind of a secondary set that I've had. I have a couple larger screwdrivers, so a number three Robertson and a flathead. I do still need to get a number three Phillips as well, so I don't have that in the bag at the moment. But that's one tool that is missing, and among a couple other things that we'll see as it go as I go, what other things I actually need. There's the Wera multi-bit screwdriver I showed in a video recently, so I have that in the bag. There's a small striking pry bar. You never know when you need to pull something apart, so a small, inexpensive pry bar. A ripping hammer or a claw hammer. So, you know, you need to nail something in or break something apart, we've got that covered, along with a small flat pry bar. Good for if you're pulling trim or something like that. I have a small file, metal file generally, but um, small file. I usually keep this wrapped in a paper towel as well, just to keep it from grinding up against anything. And then lastly, on the kind of the first row here is a small socket set. So this is uh, three inch drive in 12 point and it has a flex head ratchet here, an extendable flex head ratchet and just a couple extensions as well. So not a very complete set, but enough that hopefully, you know, three eighths from what do we got from eight mil up to 19 mil is enough to cover a lot of general things. I have a speed square. So good for layout, full set of say and metric hex keys, a few pairs of locking pliers, kind of the different sizes and styles, an adjustable wrench. I'd like to replace this with a Knipex pliers wrench at some point, uh, just have to find a good deal on those. A small pair of Tecton bolt cutters, so the mini bolt cutters if I need to snip anything off, and a relatively worn out putty knife, but you know, it's always good for little drywall repairs or scraping things off. And finally, a very simple multimeter. So enough that if I need to check voltage or you know, check a battery or something like that, I have a multimeter in there as well. So that's what actually makes up kind of the bulk of the inside of the toolkit. So that's what's in my service bag right now. I imagine some things will change as I go and try different jobs and figure out what tools I need or don't need in this bag. If you have any suggestions about what I should have or any must have tools for kind of general home fix it sort of things, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.